in many countries, McDonald's and fast food remains the definition of American cuisine. The very difficulty of naming dishes that are specifically American in the way that you can say that pot au feu is French or lasagna uh, is Italian. Americans were the first people who really started dining out on foreign cuisines in a big way towards the end of the 19th century. Uh, the popularity of Chinese restaurants in the United States, for example, dates to that time. Americans like sweet taste, not just in desserts, but in things like Chinese food of the United States is much sweeter. Uh, so something that may be called sweet and sour pork, that in China actually has some sour or vinegary taste. In America, it's all sweet. So there are some American tastes, but really I think the defining thing of American food, it's eclecticism, uh, the variation. Well, they're certainly integrated in the sense that there are about 40,000 of them and that you can find them not only in big cities, but all across the country. It is the most popular foreign food in the United States. Closest competitors would be Italian and Mexican. That doesn't mean that it's been integrated into the way people cook in the way that Italian food has. Many people make versions of Chinese food, but are not very skilled at it. So the integration is, let's say, partial. American-born customers want authenticity, but it has some limits. So they actually don't want organ meat. You know, these are often the most flavorful parts. I asked my students, the American-born ones, who think of themselves as food adventurers and may have lived in other countries, often are very enthusiastic experimenters, but uh, even liver scares them. Americans typically, as in this and, and many other things, want to have it both ways. They want authenticity and comfort. Uh, so that from the point of view of the restaurateur, uh, the thing to do is to create things that seem authentic and maybe are more authentic than what they're replacing, but that people come to regard as comfort food. So the dumplings that you get here um, might be considered inferior or inauthentic in those parts of China where dumplings are kind of elevated to a, a high status. But they're comfort foods here, even if they're not completely authentic. So in a competition though, I'd say comfort. For many years, Chinese restaurant owners have been happy to occupy a, a segment that is inexpensive or they've had fancy restaurants with a largely Chinese clientele. But for the larger American public, some of the things that actually make Chinese restaurants limit their ability to be fancy. They often emphasize, or they almost always emphasize, group dining, sharing. The decor may be sort of palace-like, but it's not quiet or spacious. It's not even pretentious. So these are advantages from my point of view, but they're disadvantages if you want to have people happily pay $70 a person or $150 a person. Chinese food has conquered the globe and it has conquered the globe for good reason. It has more variety and more wonderful tastes and textures. It is still true that 95% of all Chinese restaurants are in the inexpensive category. They would have to have a different kind of decor. They would also have to orient their service to something that was not so much sharing. Another way would be to imitate the success of Spanish restaurants uh, because tapas are a bunch of different dishes. People can't keep track of what they've ordered.